start practicing making the mistake in the turn, intentionally or unintentionally, and continuing to recover. Make a game plan and actually practice getting good at the game plan. It's Kirsten. Welcome back to the Confident Dancer YouTube channel. As a mindset coach for dancers, a lot of clients come to work with me because they are struggling with stage fright. Maybe it's self-doubt that really affects you before a performance or just low confidence going into performance situations that affects your consistency, your ability to enjoy yourself on stage. I hear these things a lot. So I'm going to share with you, not only as a mindset coach, but also as a professional dancer myself, I perform on a freelance basis in addition to my career still. And I'm very glad I get to do that because it really helps me to practice what I preach. And so I want to share with you seven ways that I prepare my mind in order to have a really enjoyable and successful performance experience. So if you want to be able to ground yourself before you get on stage and feel confident on the stage, be present in the moment, dance your best consistently, all that good stuff, then keep on watching. These points will really help you. And of course, if you do want further help in really resolving the roots of your self-doubt, your performance anxiety, the overthinking, whatever it is that's causing you to not be able to perform your best, especially in high pressure situations, then definitely reach out for one-on-one -on -one support. That is absolutely what I would recommend in addition to beginning with these tips. So know that that support is available and it's highly effective. If you are interested in learning more about how to work together to resolve that and build confidence, click the link below to visit my website and learn more. And before we get started with point one, I want to share from a very real place that I used to have horrendous performance anxiety. Like it was so bad that I was in this vicious cycle of getting so anxious before a show that I would like ruminate on it and be nervous like days before. Then I would be so freaked out about potentially making a mistake that I couldn't focus and then I would make a mistake and then that fueled the self-doubt, the performance anxiety more for the next time. And it was just this horrendous, vicious cycle that made it really impossible to perform well consistently on stage. Like I would always make weird mistakes that I didn't know where they came from. Of course, it felt horrible. I was not enjoying myself on stage and it caused me to wonder like if I even really could or wanted to be a professional because so many dancers say they love performing. And I was like, I hate it. It's so miserable because of this, but that was not always the case for me. So of course, over the years, I've really resolved this and now I very much enjoy performing and it's great. But yeah, at the time it was such a vicious cycle that I could not imagine how to get out of. So if you're in that place, there is definitely hope. There's definitely things you can do to resolve that. Didn't know it at the time. I'm going to segue into point number one, which is something I started to discover on my own before I became a coach and I was trying to latch onto something that would help me at the time, which is to choose a purpose for performing that is A, beyond yourself and B, bigger than just not making mistakes. As dancers, we either have this idea in our head that's super vague, like I just want to dance my best. A, that's really a vague definition of success. B, it's quite rigid, like to dance your best, can you really dance your best all the time? And a lot of times when we say, I'm going to dance my best, what we really mean is we don't want to make mistakes. So then we start obsessing and fearing making mistakes as if they're the worst thing ever that can happen. And I realized that so much of my own anxiety was coming from my relationship with my mistakes. And I realized that I had through, you know, some training as well and getting publicly humiliated by teachers for making a mistake that I was so conditioned to think that mistakes are like the worst thing ever that I centered so much of my energy on just trying to not make mistakes. But guess what? When you're focusing on not making mistakes, you're fearing making the mistakes. You're attached to that outcome and where you're not focusing is on how you do want to dance. What is the outcome that you do want to create? There are kind of two parts to this point. Like A, choose an outcome that is actually reasonable and attainable. It's not reasonable to say that you're gonna dance your best or make no mistakes. It's not reasonable. So accepting that and actually choosing an outcome that's reasonable and purposeful, that also ties into the next part of this point, which is to choose a purpose. Like that outcome could really be tied to the sense of purpose for the show. My example was I started to shift from, I just wanna do my best, which is again, vague, to I actually want to go on that stage and really allow myself to feel the true joy of dance so much so that I can then share that with the audience so that they can feel that joy, so they can have a taste of 
how good it feels to dance. They can have a smile, they can create a memory, they can have a joyful evening that then they can go home and you know it can maybe inspire them for the rest of the week. I'm really starting to think in detail, not just about me, but about how my performance could be something that could serve a greater purpose beyond myself. And also that's quite reasonable. I was not confident at all back in the day that I could deliver my best performance, that I could make no mistakes, you know, that I could do even a good job. I, I was so doubtful of myself at that time. But when I thought, you know, what I can do is I can allow myself to feel the joy of dance. And I'm certain that if I let myself feel that through my smile, through my energy, through my artistry, I'm sure that I could help the people who are watching me feel that. So that actually felt attainable. And it was something that really settled me and it helped me to get my mind a little bit outside of myself in a healthy way. It helps you to feel connected to the people that you're dancing for and dancing with. When we're scared, when we're anxious about performing, a lot of times it's because we feel this pressure, we feel all this weight on us. And we're really just focusing on, that, on ourselves. We feel maybe a lot of pressure and isolated. But when you remember that this can be an experience that connects you to others, that feeling of connection actually helps you to release some of that pressure and that anxiety. It's about connecting with the audience. It's about connecting with the people that you're dancing with on stage, connecting to yourself, connecting to the music, connecting to a higher purpose for dance. And that is such a beautiful thing to have more of a transcendent and bigger value system and purpose for performing than just, I want to do my best. The second point is to practice visual rehearsal. This one is so, so, so helpful. And in my individual coaching programs and group as well, when I run those, I talk about visual rehearsal and I teach some very specific techniques on this. But in general, one way that you could use this is just practice sitting down, closing your eyes and visualizing the performance, not only going the way you want, but feeling the way you want. Practice it going beautifully. Imagining yourself doing the whole piece like so relaxed and having a great time. It is simple, but oh my goodness, it works for so many reasons I can explain that will make this video super long. And I've also explained them in a lot of other videos. So I'm just gonna keep this one short and ask you to just try it. Try it, it's amazing. I have so many clients I've worked with who are like, oh my, gosh, I did that and I did that technique you showed me and whoa, I felt so present. I felt relaxed. I was skeptical of how I wasn't nervous. Like it was weird, but it was great. Visual rehearsal. It's amazing. Point number three is that I actually accept and identify the unknowns within the performance and I instead focus on what I can be sure about. So this really is something that I teach in the process that I've built for helping dancers develop authentic confidence, which two factors in that is number one, focusing on what you can be sure about, having that assuredness. That's related to the feeling of confidence. But sometimes if we just say like, okay, I can be sure that if I fall, I can get up and I can be sure that, you know, this, this, and this, and all that, look, you know, there are so many things. You can create a whole list of things that you can be sure about. That is super helpful. And if you don't identify also that, yes, there are going to be some unknowns going onto the stage. And once you identify those and actually allow yourself to accept it or to create a plan, like, hey, if this negative unknown happens, what will I do? Only after you do that, will your mind actually settle down enough to really connect with the things that you can be sure about. So some examples of this would be to identify that I don't know in general exactly how the performance will go. And when I really think about it for a second, I realize that's actually the fun of live performing art. And so just identifying it like, wow, sometimes my mind gets really anxious and nervous and scared because it's like, I don't know if I'm going to mess up. But if I just take a second to acknowledge that and be like, that's actually the point. That's one of the points of live art. It's like, it's organic and it's it's in the moment. And that's what makes it so like electric and cool to be able to watch the performance happening right in front of you. There's a reason that live performing art still happens in this age when we really could record everything. There's a reason why you can listen to any song on the internet for free but people still pay hundreds of dollars to go to a concert to see the same songs live. That by the way, might not even sound as good as in the recording, but you feel like the energy of the performer and all the, like you feel the music, same thing here. So there's a point 
to like the excitement of the unknown of the live performance. And so that's a great example of identifying an unknown that could cause you to feel anxious or nervous and then turning it around to being like, okay, I can accept that actually, because that's part of the point. Or let's say there's an unknown, like, I don't know if I'm going to make this mistake that would be so bad if I did make it. And that's causing a lot of anxiety for you. That's actually okay. Because then one of the purposes of worrying that our minds have is the worry is designed as a self-protective mechanism in your mind to help you make a plan if a potential threat actually does happen in reality. But a lot of times worrying feels like a problem and it affects us negatively because we don't complete that cycle. We just worry, we don't actually stop to say, okay, well, if that did happen, what would I do? Use this point to identify some of the unknowns that are making you nervous, accept them, identify what you would do if they do happen, then focus on the things that you can be sure about in the midst of those uncertainties. Hey dancers, I hope you're really enjoying this video so far. I want to briefly share something with those of you who have been experiencing things like low self-esteem, performance anxiety, self-doubt, putting a lot of pressure on yourself, comparison, caring a lot about what other people think, relying on external validation. I could go on and on and on about a lot of these common mental struggles that a lot of us dancers face, especially if you're dancing and training and performing at a high level. If that's something you've been experiencing and you really long to have the mental skills and support to be able to overcome performance anxiety, know how to perform well under pressure, overcome self-doubt, and actually start to trust and believe in yourself for real and build real confidence so you can enjoy dancing again and perform to your highest potential, if that's something that you want, that's exactly what the Confident Dancer Coaching Program is designed to help you do. This is my individual mindset coaching program that I've designed to help dancers build a healthy mindset that actually helps them to feel and perform their best consistently. If this is something you're interested in seeing, if it's a good fit for you, just click the link below to visit theconfidentdancer.com, learn all about what the program includes, how it works, read incredible testimonials from past clients that I've worked with, and schedule a free 30-minute consultation where you and I can connect, discuss your goals and challenges, and see honestly if working together would be a great fit for you personally. That's the best next step, and since it's no strings attached and totally risk-free to you, my might as well give yourself the gift of pursuing this and seeing if it could really be that thing to take you to the next level in your dancing. So if that's something you resonate with or are interested in, again, head to theconfidentdancer.com and I look forward to connecting with you there. All right, let's head into the rest of the video. Point number four is that I practice recentering my focus often and I practice getting good at it because it will happen in performances or whatever situation you're trying to perform in, even in auditions, especially whatever the pressure is on, it does matter when our awareness drifts off to a worry and we get out of the present moment. We're like, oh no, what, what, what's gonna happen? Or what does this person think? Except that that's gonna happen, it's okay. But get really good and practice regularly recentering your attention back to where you want it. And you can determine where you want it, like whatever works for you. And that's something I definitely help clients with to identify like where do they want to put their focus? What works for them? I use a couple of tools to kind of help recenter myself quickly. I'll have phrases in my mind for each performance that really help me according to the piece to like recenter. Because sometimes if I'm doing a more contemporary piece, I really need to be grounded. So I think <sighs> grounded, drop into the floor drop into the floor, breathe. Or sometimes when I get in kind of a panicky state of mind, it's simple, but I will just have this go-to phrase of like, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. And I'll just kind of keep centering my mind back on that thought when it feels like my focus was to drift somewhere else. Or another great thing is to, instead of using, like focusing your thoughts on another thought, focus on your body. I even prefer that one. I will focus on certain physical cues, like feeling both of my feet like fully, relax into the ground. Even if I'm in point shoes as much as I can, sometimes we can get all tense, like, <sighs> and I'll practice doing this in class. I practice all of these things, by the way, in class leading up to the performance, as well as some of the thought exercises, you know, just in breaks in between leading up to the show. But yeah, I'll have a physical cue, like the feeling of my feet flattening on the ground, the feeling of my knees bending freely, the feeling of my breath, whatever that is for you, find it like one area of your body you really want to focus on, creating a certain sensation in to help focus your attention back on that when you feel like your focus is getting scattered. Point number five is I ask myself, where am I adding pressure to myself 
that is unnecessary. Basically, a shortcut to doing this is to ask yourself, what are the expectations that I'm placing on myself that are causing unnecessary harm to me? Like making me feel nervous, anxious, scared, not good enough. We all do this, you guys. Ask yourself, what are the have tos that I'm telling myself in my mind, like the have tos, the need tos, I need to do this, I have to be that, I have to make this person happy, I have to do a great job, whatever, I can't mess up. What are those absolute kind of statements that are going on in your mind? Those are expectations. Those are things that you're placing on yourself. And yes, sometimes you do feel like, and it is true that some people, like directors, will impose that on you. Absolutely, I get that. I've had that happen before for sure. And that's where you can come back into, again, that self-leadership, recognizing that they are putting this expectation on you, but you can focus on remembering like, yes, they're putting that on me. I'm going to do what I can. Here's what I can do. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I want to do. But ultimately, no matter how much I'm telling myself, I have to do this, I need to be this. Ultimately, even if I don't do those things, my life will go on. There might be consequences, but my life will go on. And so as much as you can, remove those unnecessary need tos, have tos, the pressures, the expectations, and come back to what are those pressures that are being placed on me or that I'm placing on myself that don't need to be there, that don't actually serve me in helping me to perform better. You could also reframe some of the have tos as that's actually a nice to have. That's actually a want, like I want to perform that way. Yes, I want to perform that way. This person wants me to perform that way. So I'm gonna relabel that as a want or a nice to have, not a have to, because that connotation is quite different. One is a nice to have, it's, it's desire oriented. One is pressure, black and white, consequence oriented. Point number six is that I identify the things that I'm the most afraid of, like certain things that will happen, like falling out of a pirouette or whatever. Like I identify the mistakes and the negative outcomes, negative, you know, that I'm most afraid of. And I actually start asking myself, okay, well, what will I do if that does happen? What will happen? Well, what will I do if that does happen? And then I, I don't just stop there by saying that. I make sure to practice implementing that solution. So in a rehearsal, this was a huge shift for me in overcoming performance anxiety. I started to actually practice. Every time I would make a mistake, I'd say, good, this is an opportunity for me to practice getting good at recovering from mistakes, which I know I say on this channel all the time, so I don't have to go into it. But literally, start practicing making the mistake in the turn, intentionally or unintentionally, and continuing to recover. Make a game plan and actually practice getting good at the game plan. Sometimes you might be like, oh, but Kirsten, we don't want to practice doing it wrong. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, totally. But so often we practice in a way that actually doesn't work mentally. We choose to stop putting energy into the turn. We don't finish it if we feel like it's not going well. What is that doing? It's training your mind to give up if the turn doesn't go perfectly. You don't wanna train your mind to do that. You wanna train your mind to like stick with it, to flow into something constructive, to make something beautiful out of the mistake. You wanna train your mind to get used to follow through and that will actually remove so much fear from you making a mistake. Try it out, it's incredible. The last point is that I get very clear on how I do want to dance how I want to feel as I dance, the feeling I want to share through my dancing, and the story I want to tell. And I really attune myself to that feeling. Like I take some time to like get clear on it and build like a mental picture of what that would look like and what it would feel like in my body. And I practice really attuning to that in the rehearsal process. So I get really good at associating to the role to really like feeling the feelings of how I want to dance instead of just being really in my head like, oh, did I turn up my leg? Like focusing on the, the mirror and all that, which gets you like really into your head instead of really into the flow of the artistry and the movement. So that one is my favorite point, honestly. It's really, really great to get attuned to how you do want to dance. It's super clear on that. Instead of just focusing your mind on, oh, I don't want to make a mistake and I don't want to embarrass myself and I don't want to mess up and where I'm like, Focus on what you do want. It's so simple, but so powerful. So dancers, I hope that you found this to be really, really helpful. Definitely let me know which point that you are most excited to use in the comments. Like this video if you enjoyed it, and please do share it with friends who you think might also enjoy this video. I would appreciate that a whole lot. Spread the love in the dance community, and I'll look forward to seeing you in next week's video. Bye.